The trial of Radovan Karadzic has once again been put on hold at The Hague. The former president of the Republic of Srpska is facing a litany of charges which include genocide and crimes against humanity. Of course, he denies all those charges. Now, 15 years since the Dayton Agreement brought an end to the war in Bosnia, the conflict itself and Karadzic's legacy still shapes the foundations of the country, which is divided very much along ethnic lines. Now, the man who says he wants to put an end to what he calls Karadzic's project, Dr. Haris Selajdic, the president, Bosnian president of Bosnia-Herzegovina, joins us now on Talk to Al Jazeera. Thank you very much for agreeing to talk to us, Mr. President. You Thank say you. that Karadzic's project is still alive and you want to end it. But looking at the facts, Slobodan Milosevic has died. Karadzic is at The Hague. There's peace in Bosnia. Aren't you maybe exaggerating? Well, let me put it this way. Uh, my country, Bosnia-Herzegovina, has been um, for centuries a genuine model of plurality, multi-ethnicity, multi-denominationalism, culturalism, and so on. Uh, Milosevic, the president of Serbia, with the help of Bosnian Serbs like Karadzic, attacked Bosnia-Herzegovina in order to change the character of, of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Because they wanted all of it or a chunk of it. Because people lived together in Bosnia, not side by side, but together, mixed. Uh, the Bosnian Croats, Bosnian Serbs, uh, Bosnian Bosniaks or Muslims, and others. It was impossible to take away a part of the country without cleansing it from non-Serbs. That is why. This is the project. And the project is alive because in that part, the intended part, uh, live mostly Serbs uh, in what what is called now Republika Srpska in Bosnia, adjacent to Serbia, uh, very much, uh, very much, unfortunately, segregational, uh, very much uh, uh, even secessional now. Okay, I'm I'm going to bring up uh, the secessionist aspirations of the Republika Srpska in in a moment or two. But first, I, mean, I wonder, did you actually? Um, watch any of Karadzic's uh, opening defense at the Hague? Oh, yes, yes. What did you think? I mean, he said things like, I quote, they killed their own people. He said that the siege of Sarajevo was a myth. He said that Srebrenica needs to be investigated. Um, DNA investigations need to be done. When you, when you heard that, what did you think? One thing is commit to genocide. The other thing is to deny it and to even lie about it. That man is a liar. Uh, that man is a bad person. Uh, let me quote from very, very shortly from uh, uh, a book by uh, their ideologue, uh, Chosic, still alive in Belgrade. He said that whatever we achieved, we achieved by lying. We lie honorably, we lie imaginatively, as he says, and so on. So to lie is, uh, is a virtue. Lying is virtue to these people. So he's following his ideologue. This is what they wrote, mm -hmm. not said. So it's for history that they think they can achieve anything by lying. Now, of course, it, 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 it is offensive to all of those who lived in Bosnia at the time, who visited him in Bosnia a, at the time. Uh, everybody, including journalists, could see that uh, the, the siege of Sarajevo was very real and the longest siege in history, that those that were really dead, unfortunately, that genocide happened. And that genocide is confirmed by the International Court of Justice. They said in, in the verdict that the genocide was committed by Bosnian uh, Serb army and the Bosnian Serb police. Mm -hmm. So this is not me saying, this is the International Court of Justice saying that they committed genocide. 
So he was the president of the so-called Republika Srpska at the time. And uh, this is what the International Court of Justice says about it. Mm -hmm. They committed genocide. Now they would like, uh, they think the time has passed, people have forgotten. It's time to rehabilitate the perpetrators, demonize uh, the victims, and rewrite history. Now, okay. let's move on to the Republika Srpska today and the calls for a referendum to break away. Um, their leader, Mr. Uh, Milorad Dodik, has stated quite explicitly that he wants a referendum. Do you, do you speak to him? Have you had contact with him? Of course. Uh, what was said? Well, he said he would like to have a state o of his own, right. a private state, if you like. But that's not, uh, that's not feasible. Uh, because that's what Milosevic wanted, with uh, oh, um, uh, controlling the biggest, the fourth biggest army in Europe, and he couldn't do it. With all uh, the help of those countries in Europe that supported him, the Security Council that supported the embargo on the victim, thus helping Milosevic, they couldn't do it with all the help in the world they had. If they, all press, the if they press for secession? Yeah. No, it's just microphones. It's not tanks anymore or airplanes. Do you think they were helped maybe, maybe by the fact that uh, just over two years ago when, when Kosovo unilaterally declared independence, do you think they were galvanized a bit by that to say, well, if Kosovo could break away from Serbia, why can't we break away from Bosnia-Herzegovina? Yeah, they, they were not uh, only help. I think that it was suggested to them by some countries that it, it's now time to, to, to seek uh, 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 compensation for Serbia. And this was something that was discussed in some circles. And uh, it, was, it was serious. So they, they, they said, OK, these whatever circles, mm. they said, Bosnia, uh, Serbia is losing Montenegro, Kosovo. We want Radko Mladic, who is still there, by the way, at large. Uh, so they have to score somewhere. They have to score somewhere. I'm quoting mm. uh, something that I cannot actually say what it is. But this was the case. They have to score somewhere. So scoring somewhere was in Bosnia. Once again, after all what happened there, after genocide, after the siege of Sarajevo, after uh, so many things, and they know that genocide in Srebrenica did not happen at that location only. Karadzic is charged with 10 such locations. And despite of that, uh, uh, the cynicism runs so high sometimes that they think that Bosnia is a place for compensations. And uh, when we say no to this, uh, they, uh, they, they, uh, uh, they are not very happy with, uh, with a no. But no will continue to come to those who want to legalize this fascist project. You mentioned that Radko Mladic is still at large. Do you feel and do the Bosnian people feel that true justice, real justice, has not yet been served on all levels? Well, of course. Radko Mladic is at large. Uh, but it looks like uh, it, it, it doesn't stop Europe from embracing Serbia and, uh, by the way, stopping Bosnia. What about How about that? But what about Serbia? Serbia, I mean pushing Serbia. Do you believe that there's also. Sorry, let me finish this. Okay, now go ahead. Pushing sorry. Serbia, right. stopping Bosnia. This is happening right now. Is that a double standard? Well, that's more than a double standard. That's How would you characterize That's a very it? cynical, very cynical approach. Uh, in a case where they know, these countries, they know that by imposing embargo on armless. Uh, on, on victims uh, uh, and helping Milosevic, they already did a lot of damage to, to Bosnia. And they should be answering for tens of thousands of victims because people couldn't de could not defend themselves. The, the recent um, news regarding Ayub Ganic came up in, in London, and okay. you were quite outspoken um, against his arrest. Now. He was accused uh, of killing 40 uh, former Yugoslav um, soldiers. Won't Serbs be saying, well, if Mladic 
should go to court and face justice. Um, so should every Bosnian who is accused of a crime. But this one is not accused. Been investigated, and then uh, uh, the 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 uh, Hague Tribunal said no evidence. It's over. It's been over for some time. Mm -hmm. So, so why do you think they're going after you, Danish? Uh, I don't know. You know, that I, I really don't have an answer. The British government received a piece of paper saying arrest him because of this and that, four lines, and they arrested him and then asked questions later if they ask at all. A very strange thing happened. And uh, that's why I said that uh, to the foreign minister, Mr. Miliband, that uh, I think the, uh, an apology is in order here. And he said he would look at it very seriously, that he t they take uh, human rights seriously. And uh, because I told him, the man, Dr. Ganic, former member of our presidency, was three days without uh, right to make a phone call. Mm -hmm. He was not informed of his rights. He could not have an access to the consular help, consular in the, uh, from our embassy in, in, in uh, London. Is it an aberration of the rule in Britain? Maybe, is it a mistake? Maybe, but we, we want to hear from them. What really happened there? How can you treat a man like that? Because there is a, a piece of paper uh, from, uh, from Belgrade, and there was a very good article. Ed Williami, I think, uh, wrote the article. And he said that this is a shameful serbophilia. So he described it the right way. Okay. Looking like, uh, like the, the, the positions of the, of, of the British and French government during the war, which, uh, which was horrible. Best described in the book and finest hour. Okay, let's let's leave the Garnich issue okay. uh, there for the moment. Uh, stay with us, Mr. President. We have to take a short break here on Talk to Al Jazeera. Don't go away. <music> Welcome back to Talk to Al Jazeera. We've been talking to Dr. Haris Selajdic, the Bosnian president of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Um, Mr. President, you were a part of the team that negotiated those Dayton agreements, the Dayton Accords. Through all that's been said here, you sound as if you lament some of what came out of the Dayton Accords. Do you believe that it may be ended the war, but it's, it's been a failure in keeping long-term peace? It's been, it's been uh, overall, it's been a success because it stopped the war and, and the peace is there. Uh, do I like it? I don't like it because it w it's been exacted by, uh, by uh, ethnic cleansing, genocide, uh, war crimes, crimes against humanity, mm, camps, name it. So uh, do I like it? I don't. But we had to accept it. It was not justice, but we had to accept it. It, it brought it brought peace to to our country, and uh, that's uh, that's what's important. On the other side, uh, uh, it was not implemented. That agreement was not implemented, especially because people did not come back. The refugees did not go back to their homes in hundreds of thousands, and that is what kept. Uh, that part of Bosnia that was specially cleansed still cleansed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking at your, I mean, looking at your country, given a place like Mostar, um, where school children, Croat school children, go to a school in the morning, and then in the afternoon, Muslim school children go to the very same school. Um, is that the sort of society you envisage for Bosnia Herzegovina? Let's come back, go back to, to, to your first question. Why do I think that that project is alive, the project of dividing, this fascist project of Milosevic and Karadzic? That is why. You just said that. Is that in the failure of the implementation of Dayton or the failure of the Dayton Agreement That's itself? That's the overall goal, but the implementation failed, yes. But this was the goal. That's why the project is alive. Mm. Divide people. 
divide people along ethnic lines, while the whole world is coming together, we live a counter trend, you know, divide them. And that was what was allowed to happen and even helped because the world at the time, the Security Council, sided with Milosevic and Karadzic, imposed an embargo on us, tied our hands. Mm. You know, and that's why we, we still have problems with that today. So children should go to one school. Uh, we do not want, the majority of citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina do not want this ethnic division because it's unnatural to Bosnia. And I think it's unnatural to, any, to, to people around the world. Two, two words I want to mention to you, paralysis and stagnation. Those are words used to describe the situation in Bosnia-Herzegovina now by Valentine uh, Insko, the UN um, high representative in your country. He is frustrated normally, but I, w I would say that anyone that visits Bosnia right now uh, will be astonished by the progress and success. What sort it's of progress? Uh, the, the material progress, not uh, the reintegration of society. There we failed, but the economy, the uh, the forty-two point seven percent unemployment. Well, half of it is not true. I, in a, in in transitional countries, countries that come out of these problems, uh, you have uh, the highest uh, possible uh, percentage of black market. You've asked the IMF and World Bank for a new loan. Yeah, but we uh, we are not uh, a country that is indebted very much. We don't have we have very low debt. Would would the cynic not say that you're probably here in the Middle East for money? Oh, uh, if I'm coming here it for money, I'm not. It co it contradicts, I'm not uh, contradicts the I'm idea not that Bosnia is economically prosperous, doesn't it? Well, uh, why I'm here, I will tell you why. Since you ask, uh, Bosnia is a very rich country. Has water resources uh, per capita most in Europe. So number one place in Europe per capita, water that can be that can be uh, that can generate a lot of power. So we have green power, we have uh, we have uh, uh, coal, we have uh, almost everything in that country. So I come here, and I'll tell you why. It's because this country and other countries of the Gulf were with us in very difficult times and helped us. So we want them to be with us in good times too. These are our friends. Th That's there are two why. people I wonder if you agree with. The central bank governor, Kamal Kozaric, he said Bosnia needs the IMF and World Bank loans or it will slide into severe financial instability. And also the general manager of the Bosnian cable company, Kapis, uh, Predrag mm. Kovic, said, quote, all sectors of the economy are in danger. Despite your optimism, you have to agree with him, right? Well, ev everybody in uh, in Europe, even the members of the European Union, are a victim of this recession. So there is nothing new. Do you fear a Greece like slide, perhaps? No, 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 not at all. You see, we we are, are not a country in debt. Our debt is very, very small. Uh, we keep this financial and fiscal discipline there. So it's yes, we needed liquidity for some time, but now we are starting new projects, and in five, six to ten years, you will see quite a different Bosnia, and that's why we need our friends to come with us and and develop our resources. But you, uh, I hope you yourself come to Bosnia and see uh, what I'm talking about. The European Union is it still the holy grail? By the way, we spend a lot, right? And I must say. I should not say this, but I must say we don't work very hard. Right. You see, when you do that, those two things, you spend and you don't work very hard, those two things combined uh, are not very good well for that's you. Your, that's yeah. your message to the Bosnian people, is it? Of course, that, that's <laughs> what I say there, you <laughs> see. Well, the European Union, I mean, many, many Bosnians would like to be integrated into the European Union. There was talk of 2020 being this sort of maybe magic date when it could possibly happen? Is the European Union and an entry into the European Union still a top priority? Do you think that you're on the right track to getting there? Yes, definitely. Uh, definitely. Uh, our priorities are to the European Union and NATO membership uh, because uh, of stability th they bring into the region and that's what we need there. If Southeastern Europe is, uh, you know, th those are small you know, 
from middle-sized countries uh, that have been uh, exposed to history a little bit too much because of the geographic position. And we, we, we have some problems. But the resources are there. Uh, we have educated young generations ready to, to come in. Uh, so uh, I, I'm an optimist, provided, provided that we have stability. You mentioned young, educated Bosnians. Yes. Many of those would be voting for the first time in October, yeah. if I'm correct. General elections. Yeah, probably. Would uh, would you say Bosnia Herzegovina after those elections in October would be better off or, or worse off? Not until we change the system, the voting system, because it's ethnic. Is the system broken as things? Yeah. Stand? Uh, the, the system serves the ethnic division. It's a Dayton system established at, at Dayton, the Dayton Agreement. Uh, it's, not, it's not good for Bosnia. I prefer m more civic democracy, regardless of the ethnicity and so on. So, so the elections may change something a little bit, but not very much. We have to change our constitution. We have to erase the traces of Milosevic and Karadzic in our constitution and not legalize them, but erase this. Because uh, this does not come natural to Bosnia. It's not natural for a country of a very, very long pluralist history to succumb under, 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 uh, under the attacks of, of these savage uh, uh, people and fascist ideology. Mr. President, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Thank you. here on Al Jazeera. And thank you so much, the viewer, for joining us for this edition of Talk to Al Jazeera.